Hello, and welcome to the last week of the course. Today we're going to be talking about developing and submitting your action research project presentation. You probably noticed that this module is shorter than the other modules. It doesn't have a discussion posting, for example, in order to give you time to prepare this PowerPoint. It's important that you listen to this entire PowerPoint, I'm sorry, to this entire lecture before you begin preparing your PowerPoint. Some time ago, you were sent, and it was also placed on the course site, an action research project overdue. Embedded in this document were the steps that you should have taken to complete this project. Many of you are most of the way through this project, but it will be helpful to review the steps. It's worth 35% of your grade and it is due on Sunday, May 11th. First of all, I asked you to understand your own public relations policy. That was step one. And that was due February 16th. Next, by March 2nd, I asked you to identify two stakeholders to interview and obtain their permission. Step three was to conduct the interviews. I asked that be done by April 6. Step four was to analyze the qualitative data, and you were free to send me your tables to look at, and many of you did, and I provided feedback. That was due by April 20th. And now by May 11, we've reached the final step to develop a presentation of your findings and recommendations based on those findings. So let's see what that should look like. First of all, this cat. First of all, this should be uh, uploaded as a PowerPoint presentation to the course site under Action Research Project. Submit here. That's available in this week's module, in this week's folder. Second of all, this project does count as your fieldwork for this course. So instead of going out and having to attend meetings. You interacted in a meaningful way with people in the, in the field. You interacted with administrators or parents or teachers, your participants. Every hour that you put in on this project counts, and that's how you get up to the 15 hours field work required for this project. So if you did three hours of coding, for example, that counts. If you did two hours of interviewing, that counts. Whatever you did to work on this project counts. For your final project, <clears throat> excuse me, you should develop a PowerPoint or a Prezi, Prezi presentation. And if you don't know how to do Prezi, don't worry about it. If you do, uh, you'll know that you'll need to upload a link that summarizes the school or district public relations policy and recommends modifications for improvement based on the data you collected during your interviews. You should have at a minimum seven slides in your presentation. What are these slides? The first slide should be a title slide with the name of your research study and the auth in your and your name. So, for example, um, you could say a summary of findings of qualitative findings regarding public relations, and and you could give the name of your school district. It's important not to use participants' real names, but to develop pseudonyms for them. You can call them Mrs. S, Mrs. T, Dr. M, for example, but you may use the name of the school district. Slide two should be a summary of the current public relations or communications policy. That's why I asked you to go out and to find it. If your organization has a policy, summarize it briefly on one or two slides. If it does not, indicate that none exists. Even if your uh, district does not have a policy, it's still important to say that none exists. The research pick question we were given. So slide three should simply have this text. This is the research question. What are the perceptions of stakeholders regarding your educational organization 
and how may these perceptions guide a plan for the development of a new policy or improvement of an existing policy. You'll recall when we first started talking about action research that all research is aimed at answering a question, and this is your question. You'll notice the word perceptions here. We're not dealing with empirical numbers, for example. We're not dealing with hard data. We're dealing with people's thoughts and perceptions. And because we've only collected two participants' perceptions, we don't really have a very big sample, a big enough sample to draw conclusions about what we should do. If you were doing this for real, you might go out and you get maybe 10 participants from all different walks of life, and then you would have a bigger sample from which to draw conclusions. Again, qualitative research doesn't require thousands of participants the way quantitative research or research with empirical numbers might. You're not running statistics. You're looking at people's different people's ideas. Your fourth slide should be uh, about your participants, who they were. And by this, I don't mean their names. I mean their roles in, in your organization. Are they a parent? Are they an administrator? Uh, again, use pseudonyms to protect their identities. Slide five and maybe six and seven, a few slides, should provide your themes. Now, a really good way to do this is to give, let's say you found four themes. Provide each theme a separate slide. And under the theme, you probably want to use a quote if you have it. So let's say, for example, that uh, one of your themes was good outreach to parents. You could put that in a slide, and then you could put a quote that the participant actually said, if you have it or can remember it. Uh, for example, in quotes, you might put, I always know when events are because of the website. If you don't have those quotations, you'll want to put bullets with some of the details. And these might be your axial codes from column B. So you don't just have the theme there. You have to flesh it out a little bit and provide some details as to what you found. That's very important. So you're going to have a few slides about your themes. Next, you're going to have recommendations. So think about what you found in your themes and provide one or more slides, as many as required, um, to present your recommendations and tie them into your findings. So for example, if the participant said that internal communication is lacking, teachers, for example, may not know what's going on. Think about a recommendation that you could make that's based on that finding. Now you'll notice in the rubric that points are awarded for actually being meaningfully, for this step to be meaningfully connected to your findings. If you found, for example, that um, there was good outreach to parents, then to say that you need to improve that isn't a meaningful connection because it's already good. Um, if you found there's good outreach to parents, but you made a recommendation about teachers, but you don't have any data to support, then that's not a good recommendation. So make sure that your recommendations are appropriately tied into your themes or your findings. And finally, it's helpful to provide some type of concluding slide that summarizes the study. Sometimes it's good to end with a quotation or a picture. It's basically just a way to end it so that you don't leave the viewer hanging. Another task that you must complete in this module is to complete and upload this fieldwork summary form. Uh, you'll see this located, a blank form located in the module. Simply download it, complete it, sign it, and then upload it to Blackboard. Uh, I need to sign it and upload it to task stream, so you don't have to upload this one to task stream. There's an area uh, in the uh, on the top of the form that asks you to put in some identifying information. Um, you're going to list every specific activity associated with the completion of the action research project. 
And remember that everything counts. Your planning number of hours, your development of um, questions if you did that, the actual interview times, the data coding, uh, the time you spent uh, recoding, uh, as well as the completion of this assignment for the PowerPoint and uploading. And that should add to at least 15 hours. Uh, the purpose of your experiences as they relate to the ELCC standards. Um, you can look at the rubric, the grading rubric that's embedded in the syllabus, and this actually lists the standards if you'd like to do that. Once you have signed and uploaded your fieldwork summary form again to the Blackboard course site, um, then uh, you can see that those links are located in two places on the course but as well they're located in the learning module this week. So you can see activity two is where you submit your action research project and activity three is in that folder a link to upload the fieldwork summary form. So again your PowerPoint goes in uh, the link for activity two and your <clears throat> fieldwork summary form goes in the link for activity three. So I've tried to make it as easy as possible. This completes the course. I hope that you've found it to be helpful, that you've learned a lot. I've tried to get you to think critically about a number of issues. It hasn't always been easy, but learning is sometimes um, challenging. And a number of you have stepped up and I've seen real growth in you. It's been a privilege to be your professor this semester. Uh, I'll close with a quote by Abraham Lincoln that I admire. Always bear in mind that your own resolution to succeed is more important than in one, any one thing. And so many of you have shown me grit and determination and resolution in this course, and I thank you for that. So thank you. <laughs>